genes have been even located in the Human Genome Project. If, though, uh, there's a child who by age four cannot rhyme, cannot come up with, uh, you know, cannot pick out a word, you know, when given a choice, what rhymes with ham, and then, you know, uh, fat, fan, Sam, and they can't pick that out, that's a sign that something is amiss, because rhyming is, uh, is, a, is a really good indicator of, of uh, sound perception. And uh, so I always, uh, I always like to give <clears throat> new parents uh, children's books where there's a lot of rhyming, Mother Goose rhymes and, and, uh, and other and things, and Dr. Seuss. Um, things like that, because the more the children get immersed in language, rhyming, uh, poetic, you know, just lots of language, the better, the more likely they will have the background to be able to develop um, sound letter correspondence when the time comes. Can you talk about like a four-year-old that would entail like Nurse your own, they would already know, like Jack and Joe and Dr. Hill. It's, it's like giving them a spontaneous opportunity to distinguish a rhyme. Yeah, or asking them to think of a word that rhymes, you know, think of a word that rhymes with cub, you know, mm -hmm. or hub, you know, things like that. Um, Knowing if they if they know nursery rhymes, you know, and they can do it in a sing-songy way, that's great. That's a good that's a good way to develop, um, you know, some sound. What we call phonemic awareness, an awareness of sounds. So, um, if a child makes errors naming letters at the end of kindergarten, that is a sign that something is amiss as well. That they cannot reliably or correctly name letters. Now, some kids go to schools where they don't, you know, don't believe, don't believe in teaching reading um, until later. Um, I believe Waldorf schools, for example, have that belief. And um, so I, I, I don't know, but generally, children who don't identify letters and name them by the end of kindergarten are at risk, and it's worth really paying attention. Other, also, if a child has a lot of difficulty with word retrieval, finding words to express basic thoughts and ideas, that's another indicator that there are some speech and language issues going on that might impact reading. Um, and uh, if children have difficulty understanding spoken or written language, another sign just to watch. And um, other things uh, that can be amiss, difficulty remembering sequences of things, like <coughs> numbers, seasons, days of the week, the months of the year, things like that, um, will be also, um, because there appears to be, you know, a, a deficit in um, ability to serialize things um, in children with dyslexia some of the time. So these are uh, <clears throat> these are signs, and um, also children with have trouble with uh, any kind of directionality, uh, right and left, up and down, early and late, yesterday and tomorrow. These are things too that uh, can indicate some confusion about what order things come in, and so on. And also, anybody with memory issues may have trouble. Memory is, there are different kinds of memory. Some children can remember amazing things, 
but not other things. So, you know, I work with a student currently who, you know, can remember, uh, you know, things in nature, uh, things that he can touch and so on, but, you know, to remember, to remember that UNG says ung um, after, you know, I don't know, 60 exposures or something like that, that's, that's phonological or memory for sounds and speech sounds and so on. And that, you know, that, that is a real difficulty too, can, can provide a lot of difficulty. So, <clears throat> uh, then, when, as things go on in school, if you find a student who's really having a lot of trouble decoding words, identifying single words, and difficulty spelling words, and in addition to that, a slow rate of writing, those are some significant signs that, um, that, there, that there are some issues. And I really, uh, I really think it's important to not let that go on for very long without having the child assessed, um, you know, to see where they are uh, relative to, um, you know, in a, giving, given a standardized test or, um, or informal reading assessment, a number of things that can, you know, that can really identify exactly what it is that's going on. Um, students that have difficulty with organization, uh, that's often more related to attention deficit disorder or executive function issues, but still can affect students with dyslexia. And uh, <coughs> there are students with dyslexia who also have a lot of difficulty with math, partly because of sequencing of steps. Uh, directionality and the language of math, but not always. Oftentimes, I've seen many students who are um, who have who have a lot of difficulty with reading and writing and language-based things, but they do great at math. Yes. Well, I'm sorry. I wanted to back up a little bit. You mentioned a standardized <coughs> test. Is there a a certain test that would show the, these um, problems better than another test? Well. Um, uh, a psychoeducational assessment will often will first of all to identify cognitive ability, which is not language based, and then um, and then there are tests that uh, usually the the major standardized achievement tests like the Wyatt Individual Achievement Test or the Woodcock Johnson. Uh, achievement test will all give a word attack uh, segment, which is basically nonsense words. That's an indicator. Um, personally, when I do assessments of children just for reading, I want to see if they, you know, how many sounds they can produce based on letters. I want to see how they do on a word attack test with nonsense words, and then I want to see how they do with spelling. Spelling is a real, real good indicator. And so the combination there of, of seeing spelling patterns, uh, word attack, nonsense words, and, uh, you know, and sound symbol knowledge uh, provides actually a really good insight into exactly the nature, you know, what's what's going on here. Yes? But do school districts necessarily recognize dyslexia as, I mean, like my son has learning disabilities and they've identified it just as a specific learning disability, but I'm 99% sure that it's dyslexia. It's He's in third grade and it's taken this long, but I don't know if they necessarily recognize it or is there anything, I don't know if there's anything different that they can do that they're not already doing on his IEP. I mean, uh, they can't test for it in the school. I mean, he's done the Woodcock Johnson and all those, but mm -hmm. those are not do we have to go outside of the school district to get that test? Um, sometimes, yeah. Sometimes you and really it's out of your own pocket then, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes insurance will pay for mm -hmm. it. Okay. Um, and, uh, you know, sometimes you can request it from the school. 
you know, it really, yeah. it kind of, it kind of, schools are it doesn't really seem like they want to identify. Oh that yeah, as no, much. I mean that's a big. Um, yeah. That's right now. There's a there's a big, uh, big fight mm -hmm. going on with because the uh, there's a new diagnostic and statistical manual DSM, the fifth version that's coming out, and how they're going to handle dyslexia in that is okay. there's a listserv I belong to, and the whole thing has exploded in people carrying on.